this morning is going to be Sanctuary. keep standing I would encourage you if you do need to sit down we understand completely but our last song we're going to do this morning is that's why we praise him Too 
Amen. You may be seated.
grace is wonderful, ain't he? And he's marvelous, how great he really is. And Gracie, we want to thank you for singing that song this morning. Uh, man, I don't know about y'all, but that's worth shouting over. Amen? Come on. Let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm straight up about this. If that hasn't stirred you a little bit, you need to really check things out in your life. Man, that was a great song. I mean, it's, it's, oh, how great he really, really is. And that's, that's a mob sitting there, and I'm thinking, man, glory to God. And you know what else is great about that? A young person singing that song. Amen? Young people involved in the church. Gracie, we just want to thank you for that, and thank you for being, she's home during the summer now, and uh, just pray that uh, she'll continually be blessed um, you know, she's really looking at going into like special ed. Are you still involved in that in college and everything? You still swimming and all of that big swimming, uh, opportunities. And, you know, I know you enjoyed uh, getting to go to the Olymp to the trial Olympic trials. And, uh, I know you really in enjoyed that. And, you know, I know your family did. And I just pray that God will bless you even in that area. You can sing to the Lord and swim for him. Amen. Okay. <laughs> You know, it's a great, a great thing, you know, and uh, it's a, uh, it's just, so y'all don't go, don't get in the swimming contest with her. She will smoke you. Okay. And so, uh, but we're just, we're just glad that you were able to sing, you know, here this morning. Good to see you in for the summer. Very much so. Well, I hope everybody has uh, enjoyed uh, the holiday and uh, particularly all of the celebration of of July the 4th, and uh, man, there's been firework shows all over town. We had a nice one here, and, and again, I want to say thanks to David and to those who helped to contribute um, to the fireworks and to the celebration and all the food and the preparation for our, for our cookout as well, and we just had a, we've had a, a great, uh, busy week and a half to two weeks, and uh, I know that We'll get to rest a little bit as a church, but boy, Vacation Bible School's coming up, and that's going to be another time of, of group efforts. You know, it always takes a group of people to do his kingdom's work. We have to work together and do these major group efforts that come about, and so I just pray that we'll be mindful of that as well. But do you know that when we think about a group effort, you know, uh, we as a nation— uh, it's vitally important that we understand that, that it really takes a nation of people uh, to do great things in the kingdom of God. It really does. And it takes specifically churches uh, to be able to do great things in the kingdom of God. And this morning, I'm going to be uh, talking about or preaching about in view of our nation. This is kind of a, a message following the 4th of July, because I know I preached a message concerning the 4th of July and the, um, the beginning of our nation. But now I want to talk about in view of our nation. And y'all, we've got, a, we've got some days ahead of us. And I believe there's some things that we need to be mindful of as we travel along as a nation and as a church, because the church is a vital part of this nation and its future. And boy, America is going to have to realize that. They really, really are as a nation. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for all that you do in our lives. And Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity of being able to come together and to worship you this morning. Lord, our hearts have been uplifted in song and, and in fellowship. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity of being able to be here today. And Lord, may you continue to bless us as we're here as we look into the pages of your word. And Lord, I just pray that that which I will say, Father, will be from you and it'll be words of inspiration and encouragement to your people. And Father, I, I just pray that you'll bless these few moments of the time of the proclamation of your word as our hearts have already been touched, our hearts have already been stirred through singing. Just bless this moment, bless this day. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. 
In a little bit, I'll refer to the text that we're going to be looking at. If you want to go ahead and turn there, you can. It's going to be Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. And that's a very familiar verse or passage that many know by heart. They can actually quote a lot of that particular passage. But what I would like to do is to take a brief moment to kind of give some introductory thoughts leading up uh, to that great, you know, great passage of Scripture. You know, as we've celebrated the 4th, now we can honestly say as we look at what we celebrated, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for, a whole lot to be thankful for. And we take so much for granted here in America. But may we always be mindful that as we look around this world and we see things that are going on, you know, America is still a shining light to this world. And may we be thankful for our forefathers and for those who have helped to continue this great effort uh, and, and what we call the American experience in general. But let me say this, something else that's important, and that is this. Do you know that we are going through some difficult times right now in our nation? We really are. We're going through some difficult times. And um, you say, well, Brother Steve, what are some difficult times? Well, there's a lot of different things, but there are a few things I believe that's vitally important. We're going to be looking at that here, here in a little bit after we look at our text. But let me say this. These difficult times that we're facing in our nation usually at least touch on some of these areas. You know, we're going through a difficult time in our nation culturally as far as the culture of the American society, the American dream and there's a lot of pressure on the outside trying to deter what has been America in the past and the aspects of what it can be in the future. And so we're culturally going through uh, some very difficult times. And I don't have to say much about this, but y'all all know this. We're going through some major political times right now. Politically, as a nation, as a nation we're going through some difficult times. We're going through some difficult times culturally, as I've already mentioned. And we're still going through some major um, difficult times concerning morality. Morality is another one. And then also, guess what? Economically. So when you and I begin to think of these difficult times that we're going through, yes, it's culturally, it's politically, morally, and also economically. Those are some of the economic aspects that we deal with in our day-to-day -day life. And so when we think about those things, remember that God is still in charge. God still wants to do great things, I think, with America and great things with his churches that are located here in this great country. So when you and I begin to think about that, we think on a national but yet personal level. And I, I think about a passage of Scripture that I made mention of a while ago this found in 2 Chronicles. And in 2 Chronicles, what we see is the dedication of the new temple by King Solomon. But in the dedication of the new temple, God gives guidance. He says, look, you're going to still need to understand that you may have the temple and you may have a future, but the people that are there are the individuals that are needing help. And so what we see, God reaffirms to Solomon how his people need to be focused. And let me say this, in our country today, our nation needs to be focused on the things that it needs to be focused upon. And the greatest need in America today is the spiritual needs across this nation. And not only does our nation need to be focused, but our churches need to be focused as well on the kingdom's work that is set before us. God has placed us in positions to where we can be used in the kingdom of God. And what was happening here as we begin to read Second Chronicles, we find that as they have returned from captivity and now the building of the temple, God gives Solomon some advice. And listen to what he says here in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning in verse 12. And we're going to read down through verse 14. 
And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place for myself as the house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence amongst the people. Now, let me stop there for a moment. What he is saying is, I've heard your prayer, but what if some difficult times come? So what he's beginning to talk about when he talks about no rain, locusts, pestilence come. What happens if all of these things begin to take place? Then he gives us the answer in the next verse. But before we read the next verse, watch this. America is where she is today. Where is she going to be in the next year, two years, in days to come? And guess what? We as a nation, we as a church are going to need that next verse. That next verse is the answer to the challenges that we face as a nation and as a church. Watch what he says. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I want you to know something. That is a sermon in itself because of the effects of humbling ourselves before God, seeking his face, turning from the wicked ways. Then he's going to hear from heaven. He's going to forgive our sins and heal our land. Let me ask you a question. Is that what America needs today? Come on. That's what we need today. We need that. So when we think about that, remember this. There are three major ingredients needed for a national renewal for our nation. And that's the first thing is this. We need to humble ourselves before God and seek his face. That's what he says. Humble your spirit before him and see one's need for God. Watch this. The only way that we can humble ourselves before God is when we see our need for God. And there's a lot of people in this nation today who has no idea of their need for God. They got it together. They got it made. Now, let me tell you something. Do you remember when 9-11 happened? It was chaotic, correct? Come on. I hope it never happens. I hope it never happens. But I got news for you. If this stock market crashed like it did in the 20s, this nation is going to be brought to its knees because I'm telling you something. Listen to me carefully. We can't make it without our cell phone. We can't make it with all these things that we've got. We, we are helpless. I mean, y'all, we, are, we live in such a, such a time. And, and I'm, I'm one to blame myself. Look, I can't make it hardly without this thing here. You know, I mean, I, it's so precious to me. <laughs> Come on. If something goes wrong with this, I'm going to tell you something. You could just about be having a heart attack, but you're going to go get this baby fixed, correct? Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying. Or if your cable TV goes out, the world's come to an end. Everything, we, we, we are so, we are, we are so, let me tell you this. This is not in my sermon. We are so blessed that we're spoiled. So blessed that we're spoiled. And so when you begin to think about that, remember, God says, I can bring you to your knees. He brought a nation to their knees. He can bring us individually to our knees to get us to where we need to be with him. 
And then he also, the, the third ingredient is this, to turn from our wicked ways. Man, think about where we are as a nation. We need to turn back toward a godly way. We need this in America. And the text that we've read this morning, this text can apply not only to God's people here that's mentioned in the Scripture, but it can also apply for us today. The, the application for you and for me in our present life today. And so what I really want us to do this morning is I want us to look at three simple questions and try to answer those three simple questions in a simple way, okay? Try to do that. First question is this. Where do we find ourselves today as a nation? I want you to look around. Think about that. We find ourselves as a nation without godly leadership. Let me tell y'all something. Listen to me carefully. We find ourselves today as a nation without godly leadership. Just look and watch. Watch the TV and watch what you see. Look around at our community. Look, even look within the lives of some of our churches. You know, America today, as we think about it, is lacking in godly leadership. All you have to do is look around and see and look, look what's coming. Look, look over here and look at that. Look at that. You know, where is their godly leadership that's so needed today in America? I like what Proverbs chapter 14 has to say concerning this issue. T turn with me to Proverbs. We're going to be in Scripture quite a bit this morning, particularly the book of Proverbs, because it's a wisdom literature book. But in Proverbs chapter 14, watch what it says here. Uh, in some of the verses at the end of this chapter, verses 33 and 34, Proverbs 14, it says this, Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. Wisdom, wisdom is biblical application to the Word of God in everyday life. That's wisdom. But he simply you know, he simply says this. It's, it's, it's vitally important in, re, in regard to what Solomon can say and write. He says, wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Wow. That which is in the midst of fools is made known. Turn on your TV and see what you see. That in amongst a bunch of foolish people. I'm telling you. That's what God's word says. Read that again. Think about it. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding is wisdom. But he's, he's like saying, wow, but that which is in the midst of fools, what does he say? Is made known. All you got to do is turn TV on, and all the thing you got to say is this, I can't believe they believe that. There you go. That's scripture. <laughs> it's right there. But now what's what else he says? It's very important. He says righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Here's something we must understand. When he says righteousness exalteth a nation, you know what he's telling us? If you want your nation to be elevated, you practice biblical principles. 
I'm going to tell something. I know this is going all out everywhere, but I'm going to say something. If you want your nation to be blessed, make sure that the leadership is under godly influence, and if it's under godly influence, it will be blessed. It's real simple. It doesn't say that heathenism <laughs> exalteth the nation. Why are we on a, on, going down a road for a, rank, for a trail train track on some rails? Where are we headed? You know why? Because we haven't exalted righteousness. We've exalted ungodliness. And God says, you're headed down some bad rails for a big train wreck eventually. So when you and I begin to think about that, righteousness, that is what has made America great. It's because we have practiced so much of biblical principles for over 200 years. We've done that. Now, some of you probably say, well, we're more than 200 years. Yeah, but just look at, since the first 200, look where we've been lately. Okay? That's all I got to say about that. Okay? Where we've been lately. So what we've got to understand is this. Righteousness exalteth, it uplifteth the nation. But sin is a reproach, and that word um, reproach actually means it's a disgrace. Sin is a disgrace. And then what it says? To any people. Any people. Our nation. You and me, to any people. So when we read Proverbs, remember what he's trying to say there. Where do we find ourselves today? I think we find ourselves as a nation in and amongst that particular passage of Scripture. We as a nation are pushing aside basic moral principles. We're, we've been doing that. And that's what's going to happen at the end of the road is not that which we are expecting, but it's going to happen. And we have become, to a degree, disgraceful. This is where we find ourselves today. And you know what? We need revival and a great awakening in America today is what we're needing. So when you and I think about the fact that we just celebrated, you know, the birth of our nation, that's great. But now, you know what? After we've celebrated and we're happy and we're so blessed, that's good. But then the next day comes and the next month comes. Next year comes. So in view of our nation, may we be mindful. Where do we find ourselves today? And I think that all we have to do is to look around and we can see where we find ourselves today as a nation. But I got a second question I want to ask. And the second question is this. What have we as a nation forgotten? What have we forgotten? That's a big question. Well, you know, you could say, well, to be honest with you, we have forgotten where we came from. You're definitely right there. <laughs> we have forgotten where we, where we came from. Mm. America's in trouble. America needs help. But what's the answer? The answer is what Solomon said. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and if we're in the long run, if we will turn from our wicked ways, then he will, he will hear from heaven and he'll heal our land. Let me go ahead and tell you all something. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. America's answer today is in his church and them praying. Political leaders are not going to bring the answer to revival in our nation. It's not, it's not, it's not going to bring revival because what we need the most is God. 
That's who we need. <laughs> and we need his leadership. We need his guidance. Look where America's at. Man. Yes. What have we as a nation forgotten? You know, oh, Isaiah, he was concerned about the nation of Israel. I like what Isaiah, major prophet, has written in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. And let me ask you, even if you don't turn there, I want you just to listen. See if this describes where we are today. Listen to what he says. Woe unto them who call evil good. <laughs> oh, man. They call evil good. He, God says, woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. Hmm. Man, I, I, I can't even go there. Because if I go there, I'm going to lay some black rubber on the road, buddy, when I go there. I could get into moral, ethical issues, political issues, and everything. But shame in America when they call good evil and evil good. Wow. They're already sending the police after me. Here we go. Who put darkness for light. Wow. And light for darkness. Who put what? Bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. If you, ever, if you know, that's what's going on in America today. What's, what's good is now bad. And what's bad is now good. I mean, in everything. Oh, I tell you what. Our forefathers were just terrible people. They were just terrible people. Why are you calling them ter terrible people when you're driving around in your nice cars, living in million-dollar homes, having million-dollar jobs, eating whatever you want to eat? What you have is not what you've produced. It's what your forefathers have given you. Kind of got quiet when I said that. We're living off the blessings of our forefathers today. And we're pouring the blessings down a tube of forgetfulness. Exactly what's happening today. When you and I begin to think about that, remember this verse. He says, woe. God says, woe unto you when you call good bad and bad good and light darkness and darkness light. That's exactly what's going on in America today. God says, be careful. Woe unto you. See, what we have got to realize is this. If you want good, if you want good, do good. <laughs> Real simple. If you want good, do good. If you want ungodliness principles, watch the results. There's a result. We are sowing some bad seeds in America today. And this can be applied to our nation or even on a personal, individual, spiritual condition. See, I like what it says. I'm, I'm going to read the passage, then I'll tell you where it's located. Okay. This is true, I believe, on a personal level, a family level, a community level, state level, or national level. Regardless, listen to what this scripture says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Wow. What we have sown in the past 30 to 40 years is what we're reaping now. And what we have sown in relationships is what we're reaping today. Let me tell you something. Whatsoever one sows, that shall he also reap. Now watch what it says in the ninth verse. Now you're saying, well, Brother Steve, you told us where it was. It's in Galatians. I'll let you know that now. It's in Galatians chapter 6. But watch what he says. And let us not be weary in well-doing, even though we have some trying times. For in due season, we shall reap. If we faint not. <laughs> if we faint not. So when you and I begin to, begin to think about these things, we need to be so mindful of the fact of what we have forgotten as a nation and what we need in our nation. Be mindful of the fact that we find ourselves where we are as a nation because of the direction that we've taken. And when we begin to think about a nation, be mindful of what we have forgotten. But there's another question, third and final question, and quickly we'll work through this one. The third question is this. When does a nation turn from God? When does it? See, a nation turns from God when a nation becomes spiritually exposed. Spiritually exposed. You say, what do you mean by that? Exposed to whatever comes along. See, watch this. A nation is doing good as long as it stays spiritually focused. But when a nation becomes spiritually exposed, then it is open to whatever comes down the track. And that's exactly where America is today. We're exposed because we're open to anything and everything. There's no shelter nor protection now. We're open. And the building is probably about to collapse because we've exposed ourselves to everything. See, there's a result to being so vulnerable. We have put ourselves in a position and a situation to where that's where we find ourselves today. But you know what? God has the answer for it. Found in our text. If my people, what? Will humble themselves and pray. Seek his face. Turn from our wicked ways. He'll heal from heaven. He'll heal, he'll heal our land. Something for us to think about. Because, you know, even churches today become easy targets for the secular world. We become that way. We're bringing it down, okay? We're coming down to a conclusion. I'd like to read Psalm chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. Watch what David says here. He says this. The nation is sunk down <laughs> in the pit that they made. <laughs> Did you get that? Look, David's smart enough to know that the nation is in the mess that it's in because the people caused it to happen. That's what he says. He says the nation, now let me, let me say in nations is a nice way of what is really written there. You know what really the interpretation is? The heathen. Ooh. The heathen are sunk 
down in a pit that they themselves have made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken, meaning they've created the problem, now they've sunk into it, and they've hung themselves in the net that they themselves set. Let me ask you one question. Does that sound like America? Yes. America has created the mess that we're in, and we set the net for our own catching. Wow, and trapping. That's what he's saying. David was, was sharp spiritually. Then we look what it says. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Let me ask you a question. Boy, this is tough preaching right now. This is when a preacher is grinding at the wheel right now. How many people are in the conditions they are today because of their own making? Come on, y'all, let's be honest. That's what he's saying. They're in the condition that they're in because of their own, because of what they have been doing or done. That's the natural result. But you know what? There is still a God <laughs> who looks down and says, you knucklehead, you have messed up. This is, re is the result of your mess up. But I'm willing to forgive you and take you somewhere that you've never been with me before. That's what God desires to do, to change our lives, give us a new life, and take us somewhere with him that we haven't been before. But then look at the terrible results. He said, speaking of the nations, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Wow. Hmm. That's important. Remember this. A nation can slowly turn from God when it turns from biblical principles and it begins to compromise. When it begins to compromise and turn from biblical principles, a nation will then begin to turn from God and the consequences of that will come. This seems to have happened and it seems to happen when we forfeit our personal responsibilities. <laughs> That's what happens in a nation. When we expect political leaders to take care of our problems, and we can't take care of the problem in our own community. Huh. We shun personal responsibility. But God wants to revive the whole nation. We as individuals need to examine our own lives and see where we are in our lives. This relates to our marriage it relates to our families. It relates to our work. It relates to every area of our lives. And remember this, if we want healing in our nation and in our relationships, let's practice 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Humble ourselves before God. Seek him in prayer and turn from our wicked ways. Then he'll heal from heaven <laughs> and he'll heal our land. Will you?
bow your heads, please. With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. As Rana comes to play a hymn of invitation, has God spoken to you lately? Is he dealing with you lately about some things in your life? Has he spoken to you and he's wanting you to respond? Do you need to surrender maybe some area of your life to him? Is there some decision that you need to make today? as God speaks and as he guides. Lord, I pray this morning as we have sung praises to you and we've opened the pages of your word and your word has spoken to our hearts, maybe today is a day for us to forever draw closer to you. Lord, I pray that you'll bless this moment of invitation and I pray that we'll take what we've experienced today into this upcoming week. May you just bless this moment of invitation in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.